I'm Michael. And today we're checking out the very new, so new it's a prototype, Tidal Blades 2, Rise of the Unfolders. That's now right. on Kickstarter. That's right. Yes. Yes. And for those of you who are interested, I'm going to put a link in the chat. Boop, boop. Just like that. And uh, yeah, you can It's doing very well it. on Kickstarter. Congrats. Uh -oh. What? We don't have our chat up for some reason. No, it's there. Is it? Yep. It, it doesn't just... It it, it's up. good. It's there. Okay. Um, so yes, it. it is currently I'm on Kickstarter. Almost head. at half a thousand. Just half a million? Half a million. Yeah, a thousand is <laughs> a lot different than a million. You know, add some zeros. He's doing very well. <laughs> billion. <laughs> One <no>. billion dollars. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying. Yes. It's doing well and it, as, as well it should because it is an awesome game and we're very excited to show it off. So I had fun with uh, <laughs> Tidal Blades Heroes of the Reef. Uh, it's a solid worker placement game, going yeah. around and doing whichever actions you want on the map. This game is like if you took Tidal Blades Heroes of the Reef and Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion and shook them up together, and this is what came out. And it does so many things really, really well. Really and, well. and I prefer it to Heroes of the Reef. So, oh, yeah. And I, I can't I wait too. for the whole campaign to be done so I can I play the whole thing. I know. Currently, I just have six of them right here. Yes. Six of the 18 scenarios that this comes with. Um, so one big difference, obviously, is that it's a cooperative game. So I, I prefer the co-op. Uh, mode in general just i like working with you to go figure out what we need to do get it done optimize everything yeah yeah and so i think uh that's why i like this one a little bit more than the first one yeah um i also uh i like i like the strategic tactical movement or on the on the on the board and trying to figure out where to go and the initiative track. You're going to see a lot of things if you are a fan of Gloomhaven Jaws of the Line. You're going to see a lot of mechanics that are similar to, but not exactly the same as um, those mechanics. Um, so uh, I know a lot of other reviewers are starting out with scenario one. We are going to start off with scenario two. So we had already played scenario one before. Yep. And we did not keep track of any of the stats because we're like, yeah, we're going to do it on the stream. We don't need to do. keep track of anything. No. And then James said, hey, how about doing scenario two and three? And I'm like, oh, we got to replay one. Well, yeah, and right. so we did. And so we are ready to go with scenario two. Yes. Um, so as I do, I'm going to explain how everything works together and I already have scenario two set up so this is not how it's going to look on your first game no um but yeah let's go ahead and look at this fantastic prototype yeah uh, keep in mind that since it is a prototype uh some of uh everything might some of the the components might change a little bit um let me scroll up here on the rules so I am sure to not miss anything um if you are interested in checking out the rules, they are available on the Kickstarter page on the link that I that I put. Oh, Wim said chat test. Uh, see, yes. is, it, is it, does it, chat exist? It did. It did. Yes. I did not see it. Nightbot so, doesn't show up. The nightbot. In the chat. No. So that Oh, because I I did a nightbot link. That's yeah. why. Yes. I was like, why does that not work? Alright, so uh each uh player has a hero board for example i have echo and uh, so i've got all of my board i've got six shells up in the uncharged shells area and for those of you who are familiar with heroes of the reef this sort of mechanic works sort of similarly where you can move things to the spell shield and then they go over to the quantum reservoir and how all that cycles I don't think I get to keep all mine. There. No, you don't. I don't, uh, I don't think you get to keep those. Well, that's too bad. <clears throat> nor, uh, nor do you keep anything else from game to game. You mark your fruit in between games. I do have two fruit from the leftovers of the first. Mm, that goes on your sheet. Oh, okay. So I don't get. It's that. saved and cannot be used during subsequent scenarios. So why is it saved? Uh. It can be used later to upgrade your stuff. Fruit is very valuable. Ah. Oh. 
So, you're going to use that to upgrade your deck. Well, I do like that. So, so like I said, this is going to be th uh, going through 18 different scenarios. And, uh, hey, if you lose a scenario, don't worry. Um, the, these uh, Title Blades heroes are used to folding time and, <laughs> and folding space, which is how sometimes they will teleport, uh, you know, to... Uh, you know, great distances and everything. So what happens is thematically you will be teleported a few seconds before the battle <laughs> starts and you will know what happened in the battle and you're going to get some fruit to start. Um, but you, uh, you basically start that scenario over again and you can do that over and over until you get a winning result, mm. which is good. Um, but if you don't want to, there are actually rules for moving forward without uh, restarting this scenario. So, um, each of the characters, uh, let's see, we've, I've got my starting sheet. As you can see, I've got my echo sheet mm -hmm. and, uh, notice I've already taken a wound on this wound track. <laughs> Every five wounds that we take, it's, we're going to get a battle scar. So the That's key is good. don't get battle scars. Uh, we've also got, uh, five experience each of us do. And I've got no fruit. Steph has two fruit. Ain't I cute? Echo's so cute. It's true. So, uh, the inside will show where all of the stats are going to start. So, I've already got this second level of synergy, um, which will give me a quantum upgrade. Um, so, I've already got, I've got three slots that are filled. Um... I've got one level of spirit, so I start at one, a maximum of two. I've got a focus of level two, so I start at one, I have a max of three. And my resilience, I have seven hit points, basically. Mm. Um, I will also, uh, starting with scenario two, you work on your personal goals. I've got a knowledge track and a power track. And Steph has uh, a flow track and a gain track, I think. Yep. Help me uh, out here, grit. A grit track so we all know from chaz's experience that messing with time is a bad idea says slivers <laughs> <laughs> um and when you upgrade stuff you're going to be upgrading them in this uh little area you can upgrade your skills and we've got our fame track on the back hey we've already got two fame when we get to 15 fame we get to unlock silver cards at 30 fame we're going to unlock gold cards but hey we don't even know how to upgrade those yet <laughs> yeah so we're just now starting off learning about gold cards. One step at a time. One step at a time. So. Hey, James. Welcome in. Hey, James. Yo. So if anybody has any questions, James is in the house. James. <laughs> so, um, as you can see, each player has a starting initiative. And you're, you're going to place your little critter on the initiative track. You will also, uh, at the start of each scenario, you will place... All of the critters that are ex that exist on the board, you will put them on with their starting initiative. The Sea Hound has a starting initiative of two. The Mud Crab has a starting initiative of three. Um, you will always place the monsters to the right of any heroes. And as the game goes on, we are going to be adjusting our initiative up and down this track. If you move from one track to another, you're just going to put yourself at the back of the track uh, of wherever you're going to go to. Um, oh, hey! Check out the anonymous gifter gifting a subscription to, to James. James. Well, Yay. it's good. It's I Druid know. City Game Night. That right? is great. Thank you so much for that gift sub. Yeah. So, um, and if you're already at the top, let's say we were already both at the top and I played something that boosted my initiative, I'm already at the top, I would get to go to the Front. Very front. Or let's say I was down at the bottom. I would move to the very back. So, <laughs> yeah, that's not great either. <laughs> so the initiative track will basically say in what order that we're going to go. Oh, hey, thanks for following. Thanks for following. So if we were to go right now, the sea hounds would go first. I would go second. The mud crabs would go third. And you would go last. I'm always last. I'm slow. What is your name? Your guy's I'm name dust. is Dust. I'm Dusty. And you have, <laughs> you've you've got no wounds. I got no wounds. I which didn't. is not what happened the first time we played. Well, I also, I I didn't, I, I feel, I made a lot of mistakes that first game. So I mm. played a lot better the second time. You played a lot more defensively. 
So no. did I, but I actually, I, I sort of at the very end. <laughs> I was, no, don't hurt. Well, we, we forgot a few things, and I, I'm pretty sure I screwed something up. So I'm glad we played it again. Because, yes. Okay. Now we played it. We don't have to put a little asterisk next yeah, to it. Yeah, exactly. No asterisks for this game. Dust on fish? D <laughs> what? No, no. It's just no, not a fish. Dust is not a fish. I can't even tell if it's a she or he, but we're going to go with she, I guess. <laughs> you could be she. Hey, deadpan. So, uh, as I said, each... Each character is slightly different. Remember how, how high I had the synergy and focus up? She's got the spirit and resilience up. So that's so we're a good balance. Super helpful. We're a really good balance. Seems like it. So uh, as we gain on our personal goals, we will unlock cards. We will unlock skills. And that's going to be super helpful to us as we go on. Now, something that you're not going to have to worry about on your first scenario are goal cards, and that's how we advance on those two tracks. At the start of scenario uh, two and going forward from there, you will draw a random one. Here is my first goal card. I've got self-experimentation. <laughs> if I gain a status or a wound, that doesn't sound great. No. Nope. Um, I will gain uh, a uh, track on here and if i get it a second time i'm going to go ahead again and knowledge. that's going to give me three knowledge that's super good yeah uh aggressive experiment if i defeat an enemy i'm going to go i get a one on the one slot and if i defeat a second one i'm going to get plus two on my power track nice so and they're all a little bit different yeah so it's going to give you some sort of special thing I like that. I like that a lot. We haven't done that yet because it wasn't in the first scenario. Right, So yeah. that's exciting. Yeah, absolutely. So um, let's go forward on the rules a little bit. Um, uh, there are 12 attack dice that come in the game. They are D6. They have three different symbols on them. Um, there are actually I didn't have any of them with the little tide symbol hmm. so that you can actually roll tide. I see what you did there, James. <laughs> so uh, I know I know you're from Alabama. So <laughs> I know you've got the little roll tide going on. So uh, <laughs> uh, and there is also a die that only the monster, a D8 that only the monsters will be using. Uh, and it has a fourth different type of symbol on it that will negate any sort of damage. It's actually green instead of gray, uh, the little not symbol there. Um, so um, let's see. The We have a reward bag set up. Uh, the game, uh, at least our prototype, came with two bags, as you can see. What is in this bag? Oh, that's got the other citizens that we don't even need to use. Hey, we saved all of our citizens. In yeah, the first we totally scenario. did. Um, so in the first scenario, basically, we're enjoying this this party that's going on, and this uh, tentacle monster comes up, rah, it starts. You know, the tentacles are attacking everybody, and as soon as you kill all the tentacles, well, then some mud crabs and some more tentacles show up on the other board, and they start swiping citizens. And uh, as you go along, the game will basically add one extra thing and one extra thing, sort of uh, ramping the difficulty up gently for you, uh, just so you're not throwing everything all at once. Yep. Um, so uh, it'll start taking citizens away and you can save citizens and you want to save them and kill all of the tentacles before uh, the 12th uh, round happens. Uh, you'll only have 12 rounds on any of these scenarios. As far as I know, I believe you get 12, a maximum of 12 rounds. But hey, if you beat it even quicker, then you can gain extra experience and fame. So, <laughs> um, oh, Dan thought the characters in Tidal Blades were fish people. Well, there are out. There's an alligator. Uh, yeah, Cayman. Yeah. He, he is a Cayman came in uh, alligator i guess yeah so um we've got the bag contains uh the reward bag contains four fruit seven spirit and seven focus uh the fruit will be good for upgrading later and the spirit and focus are used to uh move our spirit and focus up which is super helpful there are 14 as we go through the game in the world of navari look at that now navari Navari. Yeah, and we're going to start exploring Naviri, I believe, at the end of Scenario 3. I think that's where we upgrade stuff. So, spoiler alert, 
Um, Let's upgrade. Yeah, we're going to get to upgrade. So, um, so we're going to start off all of our stats at their starting spots. Um, and we are going to choose power cards based on our skill. Now, at the start of the game, you're going to have exactly one power card and you're going to place it in the middle of your board. As you gain additional levels, like for uh, for scenario two, we do get an, another power card. Power cards will usually have some sort of ability on them. Oh, these are, we don't need these, whoops. You are gonna gain additional power cards. Hey, here's my second power card I've gotten, and I am gonna choose to put it in my deck instead of starting it on my board. I really like the one I've got on my board here. Um, Plus, when I draw this card, I'm going to go down one initiative. Mm. So I really want to go ahead and start it on my board. This one does not have an initiative modifier. Sometimes you'll get things with plus two or plus one initiative. And that's going to basically make you go faster in the turn if that's what you choose to, uh, to take. So I've got an extra power card in here. Steph has an extra power card. Persistent power. Persistent. <laughs> yeah, they, well, they all have a persistent power on yeah. them. Yes. Yes. Some of them will have powers. All of the power cards will have persistent powers. Um, and I'm going to explain how those go here in a second. So, shovel up your deck, Steph, and draw four cards to start. One, two, three, four. So, um... And we're going to, this is the point where we choose our goals. Um, let's see here. So uh, during each scenario, um, we are going to choose a card from our hand of the four that we have. And then uh, we are going to, everyone's going to reveal at the same time. We're also going to reveal one card for each enemy. And we're going to shift in order. And this is really specific. We're going to go from top to bottom on the initiative track, adjusting where we are and going to the back of the line if need be. So um, so make sure to resolve your initiative changes in turn order. So whenever it is a hero's turn, we're going to take whatever card we chose and we're going to place it somewhere on our Nexus board. Um, oh. Sorry. That's not the first thing that happens. No. The very first thing that happens. And Steph missed this all the time. Mm -mm. Yes, you did. You missed this all the time. This is where you take all of the shells that remain on your shell shield. You're going to move them over to your quantum reservoir. So uh, that's what happens first of anything. If you have any powers that activate at the start of your turn, you're going to do those now. Then you're going to place your card on the Nexus board. Let me remove these because I don't have anything on my spell shield. Um, you're going to, you're on my shell shield rather. You're going to take your card and you're going to place it into any open space on your grid. So let's say that I were to place this card, I would place it wherever I want. I can even place it up here in the corner. You don't have to place it next to where another card already is. And then you are going to choose one row or one column to activate. So if I were to place it here, I would get two shells on my shield. Uh, at uh, You don't have to do them in this order. You can do any of these in any order, but you have to finish everything on a card before moving on to another card. Um, for this one, I would take plus, I would take three movement and move a shield over to my quantum reservoir. Uh, again, two on my spell shield. And then I can either move two or do a two attack. Now, whenever you see this symbol here, that means a ranged attack. If I didn't have this symbol, I would have to be adjacent to the monster that I was attacking. And also, my persistent power would activate. I have plus one range for all my ranged attacks. So that would actually be a range of three. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, let's say we're gonna attack a monster. I'm gonna roll as many dice as show up on the swords and any of these attack symbols that I roll, that's how much damage I'm gonna do. So I've got two attack symbols there. Uh, that is going to give two damage. The tides will not matter unless you've got advantage. Uh, I'll go over that here in a little bit, but that can give extra damage. Let's say that you roll focus symbols. You could spend one focus in order to 
change one dice focus symbols to hits. So if I rolled nothing but focus, I could pay one focus to make two hits happen, and I would need another focus to make the next two hits happen. So some of them have focus and tide, some of them have a double attack, some have a single attack. So there are lots of different things that can happen on these dice. Um, so that's one of the things that you can use focus for is for um, is for boosting the die uh, attack. So um, now let's say uh, I had um, placed here. I don't have to activate this column. <clears throat> I could activate this row instead. And this is going to be very important because, <clears throat> excuse me, whenever I've placed a third one in a row, if I activate this row, at, at th this column rather, at the end of my turn, I'm going to take all three of these and put them in the discard. But that's only if I've activated this column. If I activate this row instead, I am not going to remove this column. This is super important because that that determines whether these cards go in the discard pile or not. So if I take two uh, spirit and two shield and do this defend, I will not remove this uh, column. Kestrel talking about the symbols on the dice. Uh, <laughs> Druid City, good luck in scenario three. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm worried. <laughs> <laughs> I am also worried. So, um, you're going to choose a line. You're going to take your actions and then end your turn. Um, at the end of your turn, like I said, you're going to clear your full lines. Uh, if any of your power cards activate at the end of the turn, they're going to happen before any of the cleanup happens. Uh, clear your full lines. Um, if for some reason you have taken a wound. These wounds can never be discarded from your Nexus grid. So if you manage to fill up a line, you're just gonna remove the cards that uh, that you activated that turn. You will never you will never discard wounds from your grid. And those wounds, like I say, when you get five wounds, you're gonna end up taking a battle scar. Um, then you're going to, whoops, draw cards from your deck until you have four cards in hand. Uh, if you have more than four, you don't have to discard down, um, but uh, you don't draw any more. Um, and then you're going to check your goals to see if you, ha you have any of your objectives that you've done. So um, when you meet the objective of the goal, you're going to place a little token. Uh, you've got the little star tokens and you're going to... Uh, uh, match the number of times that you've met those objectives. So, um, I disagree. I think the prototype uh, is fantastic. No, the prototypes are, yeah, they're great. <laughs> Michael's dropping everything on the floor. I, I dropped all of my cards onto the <laughs> That's floor. That's a different Check problem. the floor for pieces. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, I thought the symbols are super clear. Um, I mean, the yellow and red do look a little similar, but the blue are super clear. Um, they're different symbols. I mean, they're different symbols, so, so it's yeah. it's not yeah, it's not like they would be, you know, easily confused. We didn't we didn't have a problem with any of them. So, um, whenever you take a move, you can move through friendly figures, but you can't stay on those spots. You cannot move through enemy figures. They block. Um, when you move onto a hex that contains a resource like this tasty fruit, you're going to automatically pick it up. One time during your turn, you can do an interact action. And what that means is whenever I move next to an ally, I could give a resource uh, to an adjacent ally, or I could activate a specific, uh, special object. So like if I have a little citizen here that I need to save, I can move next to that citizen and spend my one free interact to remove that citizen. Or if I were next to this fruit without going onto the space one time per turn, I could take this fruit and store it away. Um, you can spend fruit in order to, I believe you can spend fruit to heal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Eat a fruit to heal too. Now you can do any number of free actions on your turn. Like I mentioned, eating a fruit. Uh, you can also 
spend a spirit to move one space. I do that a lot. You can add it on to a move, or you can just have a move all to itself, which, why would you not? Because if you have to, you know, if you're tacking it on to a move, then you have to finish that move before you can do anything else. Right. It's usually really helpful to just move one space. Maybe do something you want to do, then move Perfect. with one of your cards on there. Yep. So, let me put this back here. Uh oh, we got a little commercial that. going on on the uh, on Lo-Fi. I will just mute yeah. it for a second. So, uh, you could activate a power from your Quantum Reservoir. For example, I could spend two shields to gain advantage on all my attacks this round. Now, what advantage means is that all of those, uh, as I mentioned earlier, all the Tide symbols will also count for attacks. That's super good. Um, Everyone has the same abilities of two shells can re-roll any hero or enemy roll. Uh, and on a re-roll, you can re-roll just the dice you want to re-roll. So if I've already got attack symbols on the um, three of the dice, I can just re-roll two of the dice. Um, you can also spend a focus uh, to cycle by drawing a card and discarding a card from your hand. Um, that's not done often. Usually, you're gonna spend. You're gonna want to spend that those focus symbols to boost your attack die, so your those double focus symbols can become double attacks. Yeah, if you know you're gonna gain additional focus, you might want to do it though. Absolutely, like past your limit. So, because the quantum reservoir, people um, should do that more. I know, right? <laughs> people should definitely do that more often. Now, here's something that that you want to know. Let's say I've rolled some stuff. And I've already tapped out all of my focus. And I roll that double focus symbol for my attack. I can spend three shells to gain a focus and then spend the focus to turn that into two attacks. Remember, you can do this quantum reservoir stuff even on somebody else's turn. So I could make, I could make her re-roll um, if I wanted to help her roll out. That's true. So that's really good. It's that. any hero, not yeah. just yourself. You gotta remember that. You gotta remember that. All of these things will optimize your play. So, um, let me scroll on down here. Um, doo -doo -doo. um if you have a heal ability, uh, usually it's gonna be right on this center spot here, which is covered up with your uh, with your uh, initial power card. Uh, this allows you or an adjacent hero mm. to regain health. Yeah, I don't know if uh, you remember reading that stuff, but that's also an adjacent I never got rid hero. of my middle card last round. I, I, I rarely want to get rid of that middle card. It has such a great persistent power. So um, let's talk a little bit about these health trackers. When you move down to the next level, you're going to take a wound. Um, and then when you move down to the lower level, you're going to take yet another wound. Now, you can regain enough health to take you to the previous level, but you're still wounded. Do not take away your wound card. Uh, if you activate this, this means that you get to add one die to the next attack roll you make this turn. Uh, there are sp things that will let you gain spirit or focus or two of one or the other. It can give you two shells on your shell shield. Um, and obviously, if you have anything that has the, these attacks... Um, you're going to get to make these attacks. Now, these attacks will happen separately. Like if I play another attack card like, well, I guess I need to draw one here. If I have this and I activate this row, I make two separate attacks. Oh, but wait, what happens if you've got cards like this? They are chained attacks. They can be chained with other cards with chains on them so that you could make a five attack. Now you cannot add a chained attack to a normal attack or a ranged attack. You have to chain attacks together with other chains. But that way you're rolling five, six, seven dice all at once. That's me. And that can help optimize all of those tasty, tasty re-rolls. Yeah, that. So, um, Whenever you've got an ability that targets multiple enemies, you will roll one set of dice and those will apply to all of the enemies. So um, if any enemies are defeated, 
Um, so you're going to declare their targets. You're going to roll your attack dice. You're going to make them take damage, which you see we've already got some enemies out here already. And then uh, if any enemies are defeated, you get to draw a reward from the reward uh, bag. That goes into their spot. And that goes into where they were. So you could use your your free interact action to grab it. Or if you're going to move through this space anyway, just move up, just move over it. And that will not consume your free interact. So I just wanted to point out that I really like these tracks. Oh, I love them. I think They're it's really, fantastic. Really great. And works far better than what Gloomhaven has. Oh, far better. Gloomhaven could learn from this. all of this. <laughs> That's why there are Gloomhaven apps out there that where you could track all this stuff. Right. Because this does it really well. Because you know it's the blue monster has exactly five life. Uh, the know. yellow and purple and red mud crabs have six life. So, yeah. yeah. It's really <coughs> easy to see. So totally easy. Unless there's glare on the table. Oh, uh, yeah. And there, sometimes <laughs> there is for me. i got to like go back I, and I forth. i got a lot of glare. <laughs> so if you are declaring targets and you are fighting ranged, then you need to be able to draw a straight line from any point of the hex to any point of the target's hex. And usually it's really good to, to do this across a line or from, from tip to tip. On, uh, on any of these spaces. So from where this die is, this die can draw a line to get to this mud crab over here. So without passing through this spot, what you speak yeah. this spot right here can indeed see this spot right here. You Got see it. how that goes through those lines right there, right past both of those sets of coral. So you wanna be sure to uh, it's not center hex to center hex. It's any point of that hex to any point on that hex. Now, if I were here, obviously I can't see it because that coral is dead in the way, right? From where this die is. So, um, so that's basic. The line of sight rules are really easy to deal with. Uh, obviously, if you're melee, you have to be right next to the. the uh... Yeah, I think all my cards are melee anyway. So. So. How else can you get advantage? Well, you can gain advantage, and the monsters could also gain advantage if you flank. That means that one hero is on one side of the critter and one hero directly on the other side of the critter. So that would make all of the tide symbols. If you roll tide, you're going to do additional damage. i got to say that every time James roll is... Roll tide. Roll tide. So... <laughs> Uh, so very wrong about game says comparing it to Gloomhaven probably not a good look. No, I think it's a fantastic look. There is a number one game on BGG right now, and it happens to be <gasps> Gloomhaven. <laughs> this takes a lot of the things that Gloomhaven does and does, I gotta be honest, a lot of the things a lot better than Gloomhaven does. So, um, there's well, a lot or, of great things at, about this game. Or at the least, does it differently. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> Druid City says, quote, 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 quote. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm a huge Gloomhaven fan. Oh, we love Gloomhaven. But I really so. enjoy the differences <laughs> uh, that that this introduces. But it does it in, in a lot of the things in the same way. It has the books like Jaws of the Lion, where the map does not, you're not doing the big, huge cardboard things it's just here on the map, on the map, on the in the book. And the setting is way better. And the setting is better. Oh, you you prefer this, this much look. more. Look, yeah. I, mean, I got you. I mean, look at it. It's beautiful. <laughs> it is. It is very beautiful. So yeah, um, you can use those quotes, uh, James. <laughs> there is no doubt we were inspired by Isaac's amazing work. Yeah. I mean, why would you not? I mean, I would take it as a compliment and not as oh, that's a bad look. Isaac did a great game. James also did a great game. That's what I got to say about that. So, yeah. Um, anyway, uh, flanking gives you advantage. If you are fighting ranged, and if I was fighting ranged and I'm next to this mud crab, I am fighting with disadvantage. Um, disadvantage, each tied symbol negates a hit symbol. So that's much worse. <laughs> so... You don't want to roll tight in that case. Um, so, uh, for every hit icon, you're going to deal a damage. And then, like I mentioned, that you can spend your focus to do additional damage. Uh, you might also have powers that grant advantage or, or have some things that might grant you disadvantage. 
So, um, some enemies have armor like this mud crab. He's got no. armor. He's going to block one damage from each attack. No. That's why you want to chain a lot of attacks together. You're good at that. I'm so. very good at chain. And that is, that is all one attack. So, um, uh, there are enemies with the relentless ability. So, uh, what relentless does once you have, once you have removed, like, let's say we defeat this sea hound. Normally we would remove that sea hound from the initiative track. And if any more appear, then they go on to back onto the initiative track. Relentless means it does not remove from the initiative track. Oh. So even if you remo removed all the enemies, um, it's going to stay. You're not going to, wow. you're, and you're still going to reveal a card, even if there's no figures on the map. So that's sort of interesting. Mm. So, um, so for enemy movement, um, I think the enemy movement is a lot simpler than it is in Gloomhaven. Uh, and this is how it works. If the enemy can make an attack, it's going to move to the space that it will allow it to attack the greatest number of targets. Then it's going to look, if, if there are multiple spaces that offer equal numbers of targets, the enemy is going to choose a space that gives it advantage, the most advantage and the least disadvantage, meaning if it fights ranged, it's going to step back a space. But here's the difference between Gloomhaven and Tidal Blades, is that if it can get advantage and can move in range for it, it's going to do it. So... Um, then, and only then, is it going to determine uh, which character it's going to go towards um, based on the least movement to get there. I think Gloomhaven primarily goes towards the closest uh, critter. This plays a little bit more intelligently where it's going to try to get advantage first, but if it's if it can't get advantage, then, it, then it's going to go to the closest character. Mm. Finally, if there's two spaces that have equal targets and equal advantage and equal distance, they're going to go to the one that is fastest on the initiative track. And um, nor with Gloomhaven, it's whoever played the lowest initiative card on this. The initiative stays. The initiative is not going to reset every round. The initiative is as it is. And I think that's, I think Tidal Blades does initiative better than Gloomhaven does. Yeah. So, um, Though it does take some card management to have to deal with that because once you've played all your fast stuff, you can quickly go to the bottom by having to play your minus twos all and minus my, ones. All minor minuses. And that's you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like fight, 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 minus, minus, minus. <laughs> so it does take some, if you want to be fast and stay fast, it really takes some doing to stay up at the top of the track without slipping down. Oh, definitely. Um, so, but it's not like you're going to be fast at at you know the uh one turn and then super slow the next turn so and that that's not how tidal blades does it so <laughs> incentive is how you can tank your teammates <laughs> <laughs> yeah initiative yeah that's that is definitely how you can tank for your teammates yeah um which is not great for a, a little bitty critter like echo but uh yeah <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, if there's no targets that are in range, it's going to just take the shortest path that it can get to the target. and it, But it has to have an open path. If, like, I'm surrounded already, it's not even going to try to go towards me. It's going to try to go towards Steph. Right. Um, and if there's multiple spaces that fulfill the requirements, it's going to go clockwise. Um, sometimes there's a retreat that's going to happen. Um, it's going to try to move away from... It's going to go the safest position, choosing the space that's furthest from the hero they attacked. And if there's any sort of ambiguity, always choose what's worst for the heroes and best for the critters. Yeah. So that's super important. Now, let's say the enemy's attacking. We're not going to roll all the attack dice. You're just going to roll the danger die. You're going to roll it one time and add the number of hits or subtract the number of misses. So in this case, it's going to add one additional hit. But, oh, how about this spot? This is going to remove two hits from like whatever that. happened. Let's roll that every time. Now, how much damage is it going to do? Uh, in this case, it's going to do one damage for this, but it's going to attack everyone in range. Uh, this is going to do two damage. So it's going to do that much plus whatever's rolled on the danger die. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are some enemies that will show up that are mutant enemies. The mutant enemies, you're going to put 
one of the, normally you're gonna put just a white base on the enemy. You're gonna put one of these yellow bases on the mutants and they are gonna start off with uh, increased attack, uh, increased hit points. And they're also going to get plus one on every attack that they roll. So mutants, bad news. So um, there's also attacks that might give you some statuses. For example, uh, there are disarm abilities. Is that what you just if, said for James? For what? The the only thing to remember uh, is that the mutants get a plus one to the base damage. Yes, That's what that you is said. what I just said. Yeah, yes. Okay. So uh, if for some reason you are given a status like this disarm status, you have to place this on one of the cards in your nexus. And whenever that's activated, it's minus one I to that, that attack. I don't want that ever. Um, there is a flat footed. If for some reason that you place this on a card, it's going to give you minus one to the movement. Well, I might just put that on an attack card mm -hmm. or I might move the disarm. I might put the disarm on one of my movement cards. Mm -hmm. So... Um, let's see here. Um, uh, with the spell shield, uh, let's say that a, a critter hit me for, uh, four damage and I've got three shells on my spell shield. Um, I block three damage and then I do not move three shits, uh, of my shells. I move one. Then the next time I'm hit, I can block two damage and I move one shell and then the next time I'm hit, I can block one damage and move one shell. But remember, you can't store these indefinitely. If if none of the monsters attacked me at the start of my turn, always remember to move those to your quantum reservoir. Now, this might happen to where, depending on where you are in initiative, you might clear your spell shield right before all the monsters attack. And that's probably not going to be it's good usually, No, it's not going to happen. Well, uh, I guess it can. Oh, it happens all the time. I'm just always at the bottom, so. You're at the bottom, and so it's. <laughs> I don't have that So problem, it's I never going to happen for you. <laughs> <laughs> it always happens for me. I mean, where I, I'm clearing my spell shield right before that. Oh, James is adding something to the cards to make it clearer and not easily forgotten. Mm -hmm. I think that I think that the mutants it's it's fairly easy, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I can, I do understand how sometimes it might be you might do forget. Do we have any mutants? <clears throat> do we have any yet? Not on the board at the moment. We do not. Okay. Now, um, much like with Gloomhaven, when you're setting up the board, you're gonna set it up to where. Uh, if you have certain player counts, you're going to have things happen. So, for instance, we would put a mutant mud crab in this position if there are four players. Uh, some of them will say three plus, like this one over here. You would put on a regular sea hound if you have three or more players. So basically just follow the book, and it this will scale based on the number of players. Yeah, that's nice. Hey, Laura. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. What? Okay, in a minute we'll get a mutant. I don't no, want no a mutant. mutant. No mutants yet. Oh, I, I think she's afraid of. She pulled out this mud crab that's like yay big, and it's she's like, really big. Are we fighting this thing? And I said, uh. <laughs> it takes up like five spaces. <laughs> I hope not. Maybe. <laughs> uh. So, um. These uncharred shells, they can't be used for anything. <laughs> Karakeen. <laughs> um, Probably. Oh, the, the Karakeen. Is that the Karakeen? Probably. Yeah. So. It's really big. Um, anyway, anytime you're instructed to lose health, you cannot block it with a spell shield. That's important to know. Mm. Uh, anytime you are attacked, then you can use the spell shield. Oh, you might want to ask James about your ability. A shell shield. Shell sh spell sh not spell shield. <laughs> shell shield. <laughs> he chonky chunky. Hey, you can ask James about your ability that does damage to you. Can you block that damage with your shell shield? Right. Can I do that? <laughs> <laughs> There's a card that I have. It's like if if you if you if you roll any tides, you will take one damage. She shields. She shells. She, she, shells. <laughs> she shells, but she sure. In the she shed. In the she shed. Nope, nope, nope. Nope, nope, nope. I got nope. three nopes. Yeah. You, you, well, that's like quote, 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 quote. <laughs> okay, I, I want to make sure. I, 
I don't think I did block it because reasons. So your wounds that you take. Remember when I said that you move down the tracks? If you move up the tracks by healing, you don't lose the wound. But you also will not gain another wound by moving back down. So don't worry about like crossing these lines. Just don't die. Back and forth. Um, you're not going to gain four and five and six wounds. You're only going to gain a couple of wounds um, at most. Uh, the wounds are going to heal. They are going to leave battle st- battle scars. So if you check the last box on a line, you're going to draw a card from the battle scar Every deck five. and add it to your hero deck. Yeah. It's, um, it's not good, guys. No, those are bad. Uh, you can remove a battle scar from your deck, if I remember correctly, by spending like four or five fruit. So just so you know, that's one of the things fruit. that you need fruit for. If you move pl- past the last space on the hero track, you're going to be knocked unconscious. You're going to remove your initiative token. You're going to lay your character down on the map. You're going to discard your initiative card and all your action and power cards in your grid and your hand. Uh, an adjacent hero can interact and spend a fruit to revive you. Um, you're healed. It's a, Yay. <laughs> Um, so, um, so that's good to know. Let's see if there's anything else that we need to know. Uh, items become available in scenario four. Basically, you're going to spend items to add counters to the cards in your grid. Well, well, yeah, they're going to be good items, right? I hope so. But then once you've used that item, uh, then it's gone. You got to buy it again from the desert market. I thought it was once per round. What? But no. you like use it once per scenario. After you've played it to your card, yeah, you can use it on your card. When the card is discarded, you discard the token, mm. and that's that's the use of your item. I that see. item is used. used. Oh. Each item can be used a maximum of once per scenario. When it's used, it's returned to the supply. Okay. You can have any number of tokens in your storage. You can take two items with you into a scenario. So, doo-doo-doo. at the end of the scenario, each scenario is going to have certain objectives that you have to do. You're going to get experience for uh, successfully completing a scenario. Um, and if you are done, then you will uh, record your, and if you're done for the, the entire uh, day, record your XP and fame, mark your goal uh, paths that you've completed, Record your fruit because you're not keeping the fruit as actual fruit tokens. You are going to just record those on your sheet. Um, if you fail a scenario, if you're if all heroes are knocked out, you fail. If you're not done by the end of round 12, you fail. Oh. Sometimes there's a condition in the scenario that says that you fail. So um, if you want to, like I say, if you want to do a second attempt because you have failed, uh, you're going to start with two shells on your reservoir. You're going to start with one fruit and then, hey, restart the scenario. You get basically go back in time. Oh, but you lose one fame because they had they had to send you back in time. It's a good thing we're using pencil. <coughs> That's right. Um, so if you want to press on instead, um, take the lowest XP reward, lose one additional fame, um, basically the Citadel jumps you back in time, sends a whole bunch of coral guards to help you complete the scenario. Uh, and then, uh, we are going to, at some point we are going to get to where, uh, we can explore Naviri and that's going to be at the end of scenario three. Um, we actually have a Naviri board that we set up and then we'll spend a few days in Naviri. Um, we're going to be allowed a certain number of days based on, you know, where we are in between scenarios. Um, and you're going to have Naviri encounter cards. You're going to choose locations and you're going to resolve actions for a day in Naviri. Uh, you might go visit the desert market to draw some items and then purchase items with fruit. Uh, you might draw some action cards to make uh, at, the, at the Citadel Research Lab to make your hero deck better. Um, you might go to the Temple of the Breaking Waves to gain more experience. You might go to the Floating Gardens to gain some fruit. So if you've ended your, if you are in Naviri and you don't have any fruit to spend, uh, then you might, uh, 
uh, you might want to get some fruit first so that you can actually buy some stuff. Look at that. Quicksand is super excited about Rise of the Unfolders. <laughs> also, hi. So, <laughs> you might go to the Meditation Spring to advance a trait to the next level of your hero sheet, sheet, but only if you've got enough experience. We got five experience last time. I'm fairly sure we're going to get at least one more to advance something on we our better. sheet. better. For sure. Yeah, I want good things. Um, we can freely give fruit to each other while we're in Daviri. We cannot give our experience, obviously. It's like one of those situations. Do I continue upgrading what I'm already good at? That is a good... Well, it's, it's like going to it's gonna take more experience, though. Oh, it takes nine. Oh, yes. Now you see. I want it all and I want it now. Uh, a couple okay. of other rules clarifications. Let's say you've got advantage and disadvantage. Like... We are in the positions we're in now, but I'm fighting ranged. Well, advantage and disadvantage are going to cancel out. So it doesn't matter how many advantage stackings and how many disadvantage stackings I've got. You don't take them one by one. It's if you have any advantage or any disadvantage, all of them will just set, will be canceling everything out. Mm -hmm. So you don't have anything. Uh, if you've got any abilities on your board that require that you be advantaged or disadvantaged, uh, you are going to... It will count as you having both, but you will get no effects from either if that, uh, for, as far as the dice are concerned with the tide symbol, if that makes sense. Um, you're also going to get uh, fold touched cards in scenario three and higher. You're going to have boss monsters scenario three and higher. So we're going to get some of those tonight. Oh, no. And then jumping in scenario four and higher. I think we're pretty much ready to go. What do you say? I would say, yeah. All right. So. At the start of each scenario, there's usually something to read. So let's do that. The early light... Oh, this is called the Fold's Edge. Mm -hmm. the, the early light of morning casts a coral veil on the horizon as you bring your watercrafts to a halt. In the shallows before you stands the mighty Fold, both magnificent and terrifying. A wall of white strands spiraling in and out of existence. Oh, that's the Fold! Steph, yeah. that's not a waterfall. That's the fold. It looks like a waterfall to me. According to your map, your entry point is just ahead. Is everyone synced? Echo asks. You check. You all check your bracers and help retrieve the Nexus off Axel's backpack. With the flick of a switch, you send the device hovering into the air. As you know, the Nexus will allow us to unfold the hyperdimensional barrier. Echo explains, it is imperative to keep it active at all times, lest the fold shuts down on us and traps us inside. Remember your training. We shall proceed carefully, sector by sector, and rescue any surviving tidal blades along the way. Echo isn't a natural leader. The Beta Lod looks frail and inconsequential next to the sheer immensity of the fold, but she studied the barrier most of her life. Her knowledge and determination are unmatched. And so the group looks to her with confidence as she enters a series of commands on the control board. The Nexus starts beeping, slow and erratic at first, then faster as it attunes to the surroundings. <laughs> Everyone's talking about the beautiful art. It's so fantastic. Yeah. Veramore loves the black dyes. So uh, I love the Nexus grid mechanic, uh, Quicksand. I don't know if it was apparent as I was explaining everything. I just love how all of this interacts. Yeah. I love all of that. I don't flip through the books because I don't want to be spoiler read. <coughs> exactly. So, the barrier is unstable, she continues. <clears throat> A formidable storm is trapped inside, but whatever happens, we must push forward and reach the Hyperloom. Repairing it is the only way to truly stabilize the fold and save Naviri. The ground shakes under your feet as the Nexus radiates a blinding white light. Good luck, my friends, she adds with a smile. The fold parts and a deafening blast hurls you backwards. You crash in knee-deep water, your vision blurred by sheets of rain. Columns of electricity blossom and vanish in an instant. You see the Nexus floating some 20 feet away, steaming badly, its protective coating torn off by the strength of the unearthly tempest. You're alone, separated from the group with no one in sight. Oh yeah, when we're starting, we're starting off one, two, I think three, and four. So we have to all come around to get through this. So we've all been knocked backwards. This is bad, 
Echo yells over the comm link. We've got to uh, unite at the Nexus and resync before you can move. You see the scrabbling claws of mud crabs and hear the ferocious howl of sea hounds awoken from 15 years of stasis. They be calling it a pack. We'd better get a moving before we're overrun, came in bellows. You've reached the fold's edge, but something went wrong when you activated the Nexus. You were hit with a powerful blast of energy and are now separated, surrounded by vicious foes. No. All right. So. Doomed. Doomed. This is the Nexus. That's what we're trying to get to. There? Yes. This is a spawn token. <clears throat> the Sea Hounds have the spawn ability. It lets them add new figures to the map during the scenario. At the end of an enemy's turn, if their action card says spawn at the bottom, we're going to place a new figure of that type on the spawn token. The new enemy will take no action on its first turn. Uh, Adanto says, how was the teach for this game? It looks like you are slowly taught new mechanics each scenario, which I really appreciate. Absolutely. And I think that's one of the things that Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion got right over its original Gloomhaven yeah. is that it introduces it slowly. And this does similarly. It will add things in one step at a time. Like we don't start off with gold cards until the second scenario, which is why we're starting this right now, because this is scenario two. <clears throat> Seahounds are relentless, which means they're never removed from the initiative track and always reveal an action card, even if there's no critters on the map. Uh, on some of the actions that the mud crabs and sea hounds have, those are going to apply the status tokens if they roll the tide symbol on the danger die, on the eight sided danger die. Um, when a status is gained, it has, well, here's the catch. It has to be placed on an action card that it will affect. So you can't just put that flat-footed token on an attack card and say, ha ha, no, you can't do that. You have to put it on a card. Now, I could put it here and never use the movement ability. Yeah, I suppose. So just keep in mind, Boo. it has to be on a card it can affect, and it must be placed on action cards with the fewest tokens on them. Mm, so you can't just stack them all on You one can't spot. stack them on one. But if the card then goes away? Uh, when the card goes away, I'm sure the status effects goes away from yeah. that card. That's good. Um, James can correct if uh, possible, but yeah. Uh, if you cannot place a status, guess what happens, Steph? Lose two health. No. Oh, yes. I don't like that. When a card with a status token is discarded, there it is. Return it to the supply. Okay. So, there it is. And it's all right here. They will introduce it in the scenario book when it's important. The Sea Hounds Retreat ability lets them move away after they've attacked. So, yeah, the ability Retreat, move away from target after successful attack. After successful attack. Yeah. Is zero damage a successful attack? That's a good question. How would they know? We'll have to ask James. Uh, the mud crabs is the mud crab has an armor ability that reduces one damage from each attack for each of the armor icons shown. So I guess it'll say how much armor it's got. Zero is zero, so that is zero is zero. So that is an no, zero is a zero successful attack or a zero unsuccessful attack. I think it's un because it's not okay. So his point of view is that it's not unsuccessful we didn't take damage how is zero successful <laughs> i agree with that but <laughs> well i'm just i'm just that's why i'm asking is a zero considered a successful attack <laughs> that just does zero damage now i assume if we have some sort of an armor ability like if we do if we use a shell shield and it does no damage is that considered unsuccessful these are weenie monsters. I'm sure their cards do base damage and then you roll for more. We haven't played them. We don't know if they're a weenie, but that guy has a shield. Mm. We do know the Citadel has data on these critters. The Sea Hounds do between one and three damage, move between two and five, and will give you the flat-footed ability with oh. the status tokens. I don't like it. The Mud Crabs will do between one and three damage. Base, then that does not count the if we have any mutants that pop up. Um, 
move between two and three spaces, and will give you the disarm ability. So, Ugh. if all heroes are on or adjacent to the Nexus at the end of any hero's turn, yeah. we read the next page that we oh, will not no. read yet. But I want to go pick up all those fruit. Well, <laughs> that's where we're trying to go. Yeah, I know, right? And I've got a crab in front of me, and you're probably going to have a crab in front of you. So, like, should I just, like, run for it? Maybe zero is a success if they inflict a negative status. Exactly, Quicksand. That's my point. Maybe I just run past him. Like, if it's zero and a disarm, is that considered a successful attack? I guess if it does anything, is it successful? James might be something to add to the rule book. Uh, if it's not already in there, and I might have just missed it. So I'm going to put this to the side so I am not tempted to look at it. I'm going to reshuffle because I looked at a bunch of my cards doing examples. Yeah. Ta-da. I mean, I could just like go one, two, three, four, five, <coughs> six, and just maybe get two more movement from Spirit and actually get there this turn. You would need a lot more. One, two, oh, three. Oh, I need a ton four, more, especially five, considering six, seven, eight, I've got to go nine. around the crab. You need nine. Nine uh, movement. Can you do it? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to say no. Am I going to say a no? Uh, no. Um, <clears throat> oh, <clears throat> I have an ability. I don't know if I've drawn this card or not. I'm not going to say whether I have or have not. But remember, I have the card somewhere that lets me pop up Next to you. That's true. Of course, I'd want to do that after you moved, which I, I currently am like going. Just assume that I'm going last. I will assume. At all, you're, at all times. I always assume you're going last. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I kind of love hate the finish in a certain number of rounds incentive. I want a lot. I like Steph want to explore and get all the things, but the timer keeps the game from dragging out. So. As long as you do this in 12, then you'll get the minimum number of experience. Yeah. Um, if you do it faster, you sometimes get more experience. I don't know about this one because it we haven't looked at the end yet. Yeah, we don't know yet. We don't really know if we have to do this in a certain number of times. I'm assuming no because we weren't told. We just have to do it by 12, I know. We don't know yet. We don't know yet. <clears throat> When Michael said, after you move, he kind of sounded like Senor Azul. It's funny. He sort of <laughs> sounds like me, and I sort of sound like him. It's crazy. It's crazy how that works. So, yeah, I I also like exploring. I picked my card. I am picking my... Now, that's not where she's placing it. That's no. just... She doesn't have to place have it to anywhere until yet. until it's my turn. That's correct. Which is very important. It is very because important. Because you might change your mind on the fly. Depending on what's already happened. Oh boy. Oh boy. I think I'm going to have to do. Looking to see where how far this dude can move. I'm four away from him. I want to go after him, sort of. Do we even want to try killing them? We're probably going to have to. Well, I, I want him to move towards me. And then I sprint past him. He might get a uh, higher initiative, so... Yes, he All might. Right. So, we this, reveal. This guy goes We first. reveal and they reveal. Uh, we have a sea hound. What? Move five. Five. Da uh, and with a damage two. And then on an successful attack, retreat three. So and they're... spawn pops up. Okay. Uh, he is... Two, two, and armored. Armored. Uh, neither of them have any initiative modifiers. Okay, what about I that? also do not. I go up to. Oh, so you move behind the, the sea hound. Yep. So the sea hound will go first. And so here's another thing. We're going to do these from top to bottom. Now, remember that Gloomhaven has rules where first all of the the bigger creatures go first in number order than the other creatures. It doesn't do it like that. It goes top to bottom, no matter what kind of creature it is, no matter whether it's damaged or not. And I think that's a really clean way to do it. Yes. So, um, Hey, Barb wire. Hey, Barb. So 
Um, we are going to place a new figure on the spawn token. So I'm going to get one of these ready. Um, go ahead and move this five. One, two, three, four. Whoops. Where was this thing? It can move straight across. Yeah, yeah. that's where it was. One, two, three, four, five. Get Just moving out towards of you. Here. Because you are closer than Oh, I know. Me. Um, it cannot attack. In your opinion, it's also thematic. Yes, I think it's much I think it's thematic to just have it go top to bottom in order. So yes. <laughs> top to bottom is sexy. That's right. The folks that were last or slower last time have the most time to react in the next round thematically. Exactly. I agree. Okay. All right. So that's the uh, see how now you, you give him some life. Oh, we will. We what? Oh, the new one. You are correct. He is only it, has five. Is it purple? No, it's red. Oh, it's uh, the the red. Now, this again, this is a prototype, so I don't know whether this this red does not match this red. It much more matches the purple to my eye. But there is a purple. But I, again, this is just a prototype. That is certainly something that might change. Right. Prototype props. Exactly. Totally understand. Well, now what? Totally understand prototype problems. Where are you going to put that thing? I don't know. If I go there, I get four movement, which is like right in his face. In his face. Just well, it depends. Do you plan on going faster than him next turn? I don't know. Well, if he goes up and you go up, you're still going after him, unfortunately. <coughs> oh, Game Crafter only has certain options. Well, this this is fantastic. That crab is going to beat me up. I don't like it. The crab? Yeah. Um, The crab right. isn't going to get to you. The crab moves two. It's going to get to me. So I'm going to move four. One, two, three, four. You're going to move to me so he can get to you? Well, I'm thinking about going further. Let's see. Oh. One, two. Well, don't knock yourself all the way out because, I mean... But then I'll be stuck. Hi, right. stuck. It's I'm Michael. Fine. I'm going to get two shields and then call it a day. It's a day. Yep. Let's see if I can actually see this thing. I, I can see where he is if I'm stuck back here, but he's going to be able to attack me. I might want to be one spot behind him. Oh, he's going to block the spot. Yeah, that's the problem. That's the problem. Yeah, that's the problem. You have to move into that spot. So he moves so you can get around him. Yeah, he's going to get me, though. Yeah. Yikes. That's not good. I'm going to get blocked as well. Well, there's one way to fix this problem, and it's by doing this. Okay. Is it me? Yes. Is, it is me. You Did you draw up the yes. end of your turn? Like that. <laughs> <laughs> did you draw? Yes. Yes? Yes. Sort of. I did. Uh, I'm going to put two on my shell shield in the she shed. Uh, I am going to go two. And go one extra killing my spirit. Don't kill your spirit. Don't kill your spirit. And then I'm going to attack for two at a range of two, which I can hit all the way to three. So he, that's not the problem. Here? Yeah, why? Okay. Because he's going to move one space towards me and attack. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm going to end, have to end run around him. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. I mean, we need to get to that nexus as soon as possible. Maybe. Maybe. Anyway, going to roll two dice. How about two hits. two hits? Yep, two hits as it is. On the purple. The purple going down two. Yep. Yay. Uh, no. 
One hit. He's, yeah, he's armored. Got <laughs> How about that armor? That's terrible. Folks. Terrible and horrible. All right. <clears throat> I had to I had to plug the hole because that's what's happening. You know what? I probably just could have stayed back, shot him from afar, and then showed up next to you at some point. I didn't think about that. Oh well. It's a lot of cards in the draw deck, so. Yes. So going from top to bottom, this one goes first. He's gonna move two. No. Blocking you up and attacking. Yeah. You, just, you couldn't go one more. I could have, but uh, I'm still, still gonna, gonna block, block you up. Still gonna I block you up. I needed to move two more. Three more. It, w it would be nice. Two more. Yeah. So here is your danger die. It's going to do two damage to you. Three damage. Three damage to Minus you. Minus two. Minus one. two because of your shield. Um, Rerolls also work on these enemy dice if you have anything in your quantum reservoir. So that's nice. Um, and then the, uh, the one in front of me is going to move. He is going to move towards me and attack for two. Uh, that's right on caddy corner. That's a three. That's not great. I take one because of my blocking two with my spell shield, shell shield. Is it the seahorse, seahounds, or mud crabs, the one that run after hitting you? It is the seahounds that will retreat. On the card, it actually has a retreat three on the card. It helps, helps remind you. Yeah, maybe they will actually run away so I can get by. I do, um, I do think the chain links will really help. I, I'm really good at chaining my combat, so... That, oh, absolutely. That will be good. And I am not as good, but that's okay. The question is, do I stay here and just whomp this dude in front of me, or do I, like, end run around him? Depends on how quick you can get here. You might not be able to get here very quickly. Well, if he actually goes before me, he might go and retreat. Oh, yeah. Which would be good. Yeah, because then he's going to go back. So he's going to go here and then one, two, three. To. But so then you like, go around him. Do you think we should actually beat up these crab dudes? Or should we like run away like we did with the other crabs? Well, we don't know what's happening after the Nexus. That's the problem. That's the problem. James. James. No. <laughs> <laughs> I like not knowing what happens next. I don't want to read ahead. I, I don't want to deal all this damage and then waste all these turns doing it when, I don't know. They're going to draw a card and be like, heal five. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> well, that's it. <what. coughs> all right. And picking. so, that is a round. We're going on to round two. <clears throat> what round do I want to do? Oh, I want to do this. Well, I don't know if I want to go up there and help you out now. I mean. What do you mean? I'm a good person. Oh, I know you're a good person, uh, but you're... Uh... Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Ready. Uh, are you going to be at the Nexus this round? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. You depends, don't know. It depends on what the sea hound wants to do, I suppose. All right. All or nothing. Here we go. I'm going to probably say no. Well, here we go. All right. I'm going to dash. I'm going to go plus one. I'm going plus two. Oh, the Seahound goes plus one. Then they go first. That's, that's, that's good. That's going to... Yeah, they're going to go first. Yeah. So, starting with the Seahound, plus one. Yes. Then you. Plus one. Then me, plus, plus two. two. We're all at the Then TikTok. him, plus two. Oh, come on. <laughs> Let's all just hang out initiative one. How about that? Well, that's what's happening. Oh, my God. <laughs> <clears throat> So, oh, at the end of any hero's turn, can you make it to here? If you can. You think we should? One, two, three, four, five, six. I can make it there. All right. So let's just see what happens. And if I can make it there, I can make it anywhere. Do his card. Oh, I just need to be adjacent. Oh, it's even better. Yeah. Okay. Do his card. Yeah. It's his turn, not you. It's the Seahound's turn. Yeah. He moves five. He is going to move one to be right next to you. And yeah. then he's going to attack you for two. The other one moves five, too. Not yet. Okay. So Him first. This? Everything has an order. 
This? Yes, this. How about a just wave. two? Oh, look, just one. Mm. Because you shielded it. And then retreat three. Oh, run away. One, two, three. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then. That guy goes. He was going to move five towards the closest one. And it uh, looks like you are slightly closer. One, two, three, four, five. And then we spawn. Then we spawn another uh, one. How do we get rid of that spawn? Uh, they don't always have spawn. God, it seems like they do. Doomed. So, he pops out, boop, just like that. What if we have no more to spawn? What if they're all on the board? And then you got other problems. <laughs> okay, I guess we don't do it then. Then you've got other problems. So, then it's you. So, I have this three movement. You are one... Two, three, four, five away. All right, so I can go like, I could get shields or I could get focus. Now let's go, with, let's get shields. Now I have two persistent effects, just so everybody knows. My persistent effect is if I deal five or more damage to an enemy in one attack, gain two shields. And my other one is when you are attacked by an adjacent enemy, it loses one health for each damage it rolls. What do you think the chances of opening the Nexus thing, which is magical Michael the monsters doesn't listen to me. I was listening to Quicksand. What? Now you don't know my powers. I know you're, you have a, you have another power. You you got your next persistent power up. Now, here's something important to note. Your persistent power is always in effect, even if you don't activate that row or column. Okay. And that's something that you got to remember. What? So you are now next to, and that's all you're doing, and you took two shields, and you're good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think I want to be able to run away. Oh, whoop, first, that's what happens. But I also think I should get some shield just in case, because I don't know whether this is going to magic all the monsters away. So I think this might be the best move for me. I get two on my shield. I get one in the reservoir. And I get five movements. One, two, three, four, five. I am also next to the Nexus. The mud crab moves three. So it doesn't matter if I'm on the Nexus or next to the Nexus, because the mud crab. Did that guy move last time? Did that guy move last time? I think he was supposed to. I don't think he did, though. He would have moved toward the closest, Me, which up. was two spaces. Yeah. He would be there. Yeah. Which is fine. Not great. Uh, do you want to be on the Nexus? You can be on the Nexus. No, I can't. So it's you fine. You can't? Oh, you uh, because you don't have the movement. But you physically can. That's what I'm saying. I don't want to. You don't want to is different. It's a different story. So I'm going to draw my card because it's the end of my turn. Oh, look. It's the end of my turn. We are repairing the Nexus. Read section 2-1. We're back in sync, Echo cheers. The Nexus is operational, but I can only estimate the damage that it sustained. We should hurry through the gate while we still have time. Easier said than done, Axel shouts, pointing to a group of bulky mud crabs who emerge from the fold gate. I knew it. Set up map A2. Oh, we're only supposed to set up... No, we were, we were we should be fine. Bing. Oh, hey Dutch Yoda. Hey Dutch Yoda, welcome in Raiders. Oh, we have more to set up. Move narrative token A near the barrier to indicate the fold gate's position. Then add mud crabs as shown in the diagram. Yikes. No, 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 no. No, 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 So we have number three right here. Not only are we getting raided by Dutch Yoda, but we're getting raided by mug crabs. Yes. And he's got a little yellow on him. So that is mud crab three. There's no limit. 
and Mud Crab 4. Don Yoda, uh, what were you playing? Wrong spot. Do, 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 do. When a hero, the final objective is to enter the fold gate. When a hero moves on to the fold gate, remove them from the board and initiative track. They do not take any more actions during the scenario. What? We're just trying to get on to A? Just trying to move on to A. We don't need to kill all these things? I don't know. It says read section 2-2 when all the active heroes have moved on to the fold gate. Oh, my God. Oh, look, and there's also a little backstory about mud crabs. Look at that. Oh. Look how pretty that is. He's scary. Look how scary He's going to eat my face. Pretty Probably. Oh, painting unmatched minis. That's awesome. So, in most of these, you're just trying to hit these and kill, and kill them as quickly as you can. This looks like we're just trying to sprint. I know, but we should pick up these like fruits along the way. Well, there are fruits. So, yes. Hmm. I agree. So, yeah. Prettily, sca prettily scary. Oh, my God. Okay, so now we do the crab movement. Now we do the crab movement, unfortunately. They are armored, too. <laughs> What? This time they're armored too. <coughs> but it doesn't matter because that's when we're hitting them and we've chosen to not hit them. So, yeah. Number one moves first. And it's going to move three. It's going to come down here and park itself right next how? to you. What do you mean, how? I said ow. Oh, ow. It's going to sit on your face and do one damage to you. Azul can't do the crab crawl because he's got one arm. Yeah, he can do the... <laughs> Can do the row the boat. Row the boat. <laughs> you. One damage. One damage total. Or you can just take the one damage. That's the question. I'll take the one hit. You do not have to spend your shell shields. In that case, in that case, I think you did the right plan right then. Yeah. Yes. And then the next one is number two. He's gonna walk up behind me and go, hey. What's up? And then he's going to eat my face. Oh, he does one a minus one damage. How about a zero? That seems good. That seems really good. And then number three is going to go. He's going to move three spaces towards us. One, two, oh, three. Oh, look, he's going to block up number four. That's <laughs> too bad. <laughs> And he's going to go one, two, uh, stop. Be oh, he doesn't have a clear path. Let's check the rules. Where's the thing? Scroll up. Scroll up a lot. Scroll up a lot more. <laughs> I'm going. Scroll up even more. More. Yes. A little more. A little more. A little more. More, more, more. Another two pages. One. One more. Two. Up more. <laughs> Up. Open path. I mean, if it can move through friendly critters, it eventually it's going to be an open path. But currently it does not. It would end on mm -hmm. his space. It would end on his space. So we'll just say it. We'll say down. that it goes two spaces and stops. I think that's correct. That's what we're doing. All right. Then we have to move this dude. Then we move number five. And he is going to one, two, three. One, two, three. He could go around either. He's going to go towards the one with the... Wouldn't he like flank you by going that way? Oh, yes, he would. One, two, three. He gets initiative. Um, I mean, uh, advantage. That really sucks. <laughs> Uh, and that is a tide symbol, so that is three so you can damage. Use I'm going to use that and take one. Yeah. Just taking a little bit of damage here. Uh. Oh, wait a second. What? Does he do this all the time or only when it shows? I think those are what's possible. I think it's what's possible. I think it would show on the cards. We can check the cards, though. James could tell us. 
James. Sounds like how I instruct my friends. Turn to the page I see in my head. Why don't you physically know the section of the rule book I'm Oh, picturing? yeah, yeah, yeah. It says it. You did look. <laughs> Looker. It's easier that way. So, um, most of the time you get your dive master, scuba diver, dive master <laughs> nickname when you're on a dive sometime. I got my dive master nickname when taking the dive master uh, open book, the not an open book test, but the, the paper test, right? And... We were going over my wrong answers, and I, and so he was talking about one of them, and I was like, now, wait a second. What about that chart that's on page 427? And he's like, really? Page 427? He turns to that page in the dive manual, and it's there on that page. He then nicknamed me Dive Master Spock. <laughs> so that is, that is my official Dive Master nickname is Spock. Yeah. So... I got a t- I got a actual collar shirt. It's got a little dive flag on it. it says Dive Master Spock. You've seen it. Mm-hmm. So that's how I got that nickname is knowing the exact page in the manual where that chart was. <laughs> so yeah. Check the cards for pieces. She shall spend shell shields spoiling shore stooges short schemes. <laughs> Thanks, Adonto. Say that five times fast. All right, so these crabs have ruined my day. And it is, that's it. It's now round three. Ding, ding, ding. So we're just trying to book it is what you're saying. Oh, uh, I don't know. That's the question. I guess. We're just trying to book I it. I mean... Currently, we've got three critters in our way, so I don't know how that's going to work. I can go around, <laughs> and then you can follow me. Uh, if if I were to, so here's the thing: if I do a time bend, I would actually potentially go in front of you, and I don't really want to go in front of you. That's true, but I might go in. Fr- well, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That's the problem. That's the problem. One, two, three, four. If I go Nerd. <laughs> Thanks, bloody. No, you should go, always count you should on go you. down and get this and go over. Uh, no, I'm going to get hemmed in by those crabs here and here, and it's going to be bad <laughs> news. It's fine. It'll be fine. It's Fine. You know what I should do? No. no. You know what I should do? No. I should get this and come over here and eventually just poop, <laughs> teleport yeah. right over. I can. And that's the fantastic thing about it is I that I actually fruit. can do that. All right. Mm, yeah. Doing it. Okay. Um, dog is first. No. We flip our cards. They flip their cards. Then dog is first. You got to do this in order. See how it goes down. Two. I'm up one. You are up one. I am up one, which is ahead of you. Mm. It is nothing. Is nothing. Me first. You first. He's. They're moving three. One, two, three. They can't make it to me. So I need to be able to travel five. I can do that. You can go six. I'm moving the, she- the shell here. Yeah. I can move six. How do I want to go six is the question. How now, brown cow? I think I will go five this way. That gives me two shells, one over to my reservoir. And moving five. It's amazing he attacked you last turn. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he That's, goes fast. He, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, taking the fruit next to me with an interact action, not moving over. That way I can go over here and just yeah. sort of hang out. Okay. So, fruit. <laughs> Might want to heal with it. Five. Nerd. Right, Can't me. believe. Just call me a... Splitty just call me a nerd. Yeah. It happens. <laughs> I'm going five. Five. One, two, three, four, five. What? You're going to get hemmed in by, That's by, by crabs. It's fine? Yeah. 
I'm not worried. Like crabs? They're only going well, like... Well, it could go right in front of you. But you can go the other way too. I yeah, could keep, but... I could keep going. Here's one more. Boom. How about this? Um, where did you start? Mm. One, two, three, four, five. Grab it, interact action. Move one more. Okay. I mean, you don't have to. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'll do that. that. It. You know. How much? I could go down. You could go whichever way you want. That that will put you in range of an extra crab. But you can do that. You can physically do that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think the fruit takes an interact action to pick up. Uh, yes and no. If you walk over a fruit, it does not take an interact action. If you want to, you can use one interact action a turn to grab one from an adjacent space. If you're on the same spot, agreed. It's not an action. But that, that's I'm trying to save her a space. Yeah. Give her one additional I could, move. I could go around the, this way, or I could go around this way, walking over it where it's not an action to pick it up. That's but correct. I could go under it. But the, why not? That is the better action. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. I went five plus one. So, yes. I do need to draw a card at the end of my turn. Did I do oh. it right? One, two, three, four, five, six. No, one, I don't think I did it right. No, I was there, so. One, two, three, four, five, grabby, yeah. six. And then one, yeah. Okay, and then I got two shields, and that's it. Sounds good. Then the mud crabs are going to move three. First, the yellow mud crab is going to move three and bite you on the butt. Mm. So... Either one, just choose a spot. Just put him up by the dog. Put him by the dog so the dog has to go around. Yeah, he's going to run away. All right, he's going to eat you for two. Oops. How about zero? I moved him. Uh, n n don't. Yeah, you moved him into my space. Zero is good. Zero seems like an unsuccessful attack. Next crab. Next crab is the purple crab. Looking like he's going to you. Uh, he's going towards me. Yeah. He's not going to reach me. Nope. That's the good thing. No ranged attacks for him. So, then the blue one is going to move. Yeah. Looks like he's going towards you. One, two, three. Yeah. Then it looks like the green one is going to move. Oh, he's King the nasty green. one. King green. One, two, three. Uh, I assume, James, I assume enemies can move through enemies. Is that correct? Since they are friendly to each other? Mm. Yes. So that would be the fact. That would be the closest. That would be just. Oh, uh, what if he? He's just going straight up to you. Actually, number three, he could move himself right here because he would also go similarly through the puppy. He's just going to go in a straight line up and over. He could have also gone over and up. Okay. So this way is just as good. And then the red crab moves. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's next to you. I am, I am faster. He yeah, will move sure. towards me. Yeah. Because he can't get to a position to be an advantage. One, two, three. Yeah. That looks good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it says music provided by Lo-Fi Girl, but we turned off Lo-Fi Girl because of the ad. Right. We can turn it back on. Do we want the Lo-Fi Girl, everybody? Who wants the music? We can do music if you want. James, do you have music for this game? <laughs> yeah, we need official Tidal Blades music. Ha! <laughs> we got a ha! <laughs> <laughs> so this lo-fi girl is uh, free to use. 
on stream. So you see the music provided by Lo-Fi Girl there. <clears throat> so we can actually use it. Um, I believe that is it for the Kravis. Then we're gonna use we're gonna do the uh, pups, the sea hounds. Uh, first number three is gonna come around and go bite. No. And oh, uh, where he was here, right? Yeah. One, two, yeah. and he's gonna attack for three. If he rolls the tide, you're gonna be flat-footed. It's okay. That's gonna suck because they're not where are we gonna go. No, I all my cards have movement. Well, it's still going to be one. Oh! And one damage. Do you take the damage or do you spell shield it? You are going to get another puppy coming. Might as well do that. Well, you're going to get another puppy coming. Like I just mentioned. No, You've got another puppy coming. That's who could do like five damage to you. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it could happen. Um... Next puppy is number five that I mentioned. Oh, he's and oh, no retreat. Me. What? Oh, he's not going to reach you. So, yeah, I guess you could do it if you wanted to. He's not going to reach you. He's going to move two. So, one, uh, two. He has to go around because he, he can't stop on that space where that other crab is. And then the other sea hound, and there's no spawn on this one, so no spawn, no retreat. Moving on up. They want all your juicy fruits. See, I don't know if we should be like attacking these dudes or not. I have no idea. Hey, if we spend the time attacking them, I think we just need to get to the Nexus. Okay. I think you're right. I think we just need to get to the Nexus. So now what? Now what indeed? I want to fight. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, I could lay the smack down on one of these, but. I don't even have any movement cards. Whoa. You don't have any movement. Well, you can still activate five movement worth. Yeah. You are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight away. <clears throat> so you're saying I need three. Just don't reds. go in the Nexus before I <laughs> teleport over to you. I won't be able to get there, so. I'm just gonna do this. Yeah? Oh, if I take three or more damage from one attack, I get my three grit. Oh, I've gotta defeat an enemy. Dang it! I've defeat defeat two enemies to get two power. If I deal damage with every die I roll in one attack, <laughs> I can add to my masterful you have form. To do it twice. Yeah, exactly. Oh, take three or more damage. You had opportunity to get that. It, it, it'll likely still happen, so... I guess Blah. we'll see. What are your personal goals for this game? Oh, yeah, we were just talking about that. What about <laughs> listening to the Lonely Island albums? I don't think that they'd allow that, but... I've got to defeat two enemies, and I've got to gain two statuses or and or two wounds. You know what? <clears throat> the mud crab has not pulled up a status yet. I might stick around and get like a status and a wound and call it good. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Mm. I need to take three damage from one attack. <laughs> then I get three grit. I should definitely do that. I think I want grit, right? Uh, you want both. Exactly, I mean, so. you want to get both of these. <clears throat> I totally missed these. I forgot. I'm new to the goal game. I'm new to the goal game as well. <laughs> it's our first time playing with goals. Uh, this number two is partially damaged. <laughs> By one. <laughs> By one. 
<laughs> I mean, it's important. You know what? I think I should just do that. Okay. You loop amplification. One for that one, one for this one. Oh, so uh, me move none. You down one. Down one. The crab down two. The sea hound up two. Ugh. Sea hound is before you. Like, that really super lame. Super sucks. Oh, but he's gonna retreat three mm. and spawn one. Yeah, it really sucks. All right, what are you gonna do? Uh, I am going. Run to... away! Run away! You know what? <laughs> I am. I. Oh, he could disarm me if I let him. <clears throat> uh, this these come over. Well, I definitely want to do a ranged attack on this. But I don't want to clear a row. I should uncharge three of these shells to gain a spirit. Or a focus. Yeah, I don't have to do that till the end. I will choose that at the end. I was trying to make some shells open for this. Yep. Oh, but that, that could be just as good. I would just activate this line instead of this line. Yep. Because I don't think I'm going to be running super fast anymore. I still have fast lines, but I won't do that line anymore. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh, I can make a free reroll on one attack each round. Woot! But is that only for my rerolls? Could that be for yours or an enemy's? I guess I can choose. Yeah, I think I could choose. All right, I'm doing this line here. <clears throat> I am definitely going to do the range to attack. <clears throat> uh, and I'm going to take these now while I can. Oh, I didn't take any shield, shells. Oh, because I want to gain a status or a wound. Oh, that's horrible, actually. This is like one or two damage. Blah. Is it really worth the reroll? Oh, I'm attacking enemy two if it were, were not clear. Cause he's gonna be in front anyway. Well, that's two damage. I can make it be three da- Ah, he's armored. Oh, he's not armored this time. That's fantastic. I could make it be three damage, but it's not gonna be appreciably more. So I'm just gonna give him two damage. Oh, I can make a free reroll. I didn't have to move nothing. I can yeah. make a free reroll. Nothing. So I didn't have to pay my reroll. And then I'm going to move three. One, two, three. They can each move one, so I have a chance of getting that. They move two. They move two. So I'm going to have a chance of getting that. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Yes. That then it? yeah that's it so then them yeah. um the dogs the puppies so first puppy three is going to attack you and run away Ugh. two damage What's this? three damage Wait. if you take it what go ahead say your thing when i am attacked by an adjacent enemy it loses one health for each damage rolled so it loses one health what always that's really good yeah when you're attacked by an adjacent enemy it loses one that's fantastic. Yeah, if you just listened to me the first time I what? told you. <laughs> hey, what does your power do? Exactly. No, I'm 
Oh, it loses three health. Sure, I'll take three damage. It loses three health. Or you could do it for the mud crab. All right, you just take it. Yep. You're fine taking it, right? Well, yeah. And then it runs away. Three. Um. Well, we can choose the direction, right? One, two, three. Moving. It says it'll move directly back. Let's just go that way. Okay. It's not the way I want it to go, but... Oh, actually, it's not bad. That's not a bad way, because if I kill it, that's one of my two enemies I gotta defeat. So that's not bad. Yeah. Uh, number four is... No, number five is going to go. It goes... One, two, right next to you. Terrible. Oh! oh it takes two hits. Uh, do you want to do, do a reroll, or do you want me to give I, you a reroll? I should reroll it. Uh, that would be zero extra, so two damage. One damage if you do that. Then it runs away. Then it runs away three. One, two, three. Then number six is going to go one, two, three, coming up towards <sighs> that you. That my spot. Uh, you want me to move him here? Yeah. All right, I will move him here. That was my spot. Goodness. <laughs> If it's the same, I don't know if it is though. Um, yes, it is the same distance wise. Okay. It's exactly the same. Um, and if you use the clockwise rule, then that's the clock, the, well, that's the furthest, the closest one up. I don't know. James can tell us whether he would be here or here, or we could choose. I think we can choose. Um, and then they spawn and then they spawn that's how I was like what am I missing I'm missing something number four comes out poof no oh yes they're all babies so if all things are equal players choice all things are indeed equal technically he's closer to two uh, enemies that way he's he, but I don't think it would count me and you. Um, it's okay. gonna, just going to choose closest. But yes, so now, all things are equal. Now it's me. Now it's you. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? One, two, three. Those crabs are going to crab you. I'm going to do this. Okay. Gain that. You're going to gain that. Then what? Five to right in between those two right there. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Right in between them. All right, and then then I'll activate this card, which gains me the one red. Yes. And I'll fight it for two. Fight the big one for two. The crab. The big crab. Got gotcha. you. Might as well. He is number. F did I set his number up right? I did. I, yes, I did. Uh, yes, he should be at nine. He is at nine. Nine, that's a lot. Might How about well two damage? Focus it. If you focus, that's four damage. Four damage. Nine goes down Not to five. Not quite five, but that's fine. Oh, deal damage with every die rolled in one attack. Yes, you did. Boom. <laughs> Slow clap. <laughs> Well, that's why I'm like, okay, if I roll two dice, I'm more likely to deal damage on yes. every die than eight Yes. Dice. <laughs> Unfortunately, these go away. Uh, at the end of your turn, which, which is, is, is now. that now? Yeah. Okay. And your draw. And now the crabs get to go. Unfortunately, you are surrounded by crabs. Is, is... So, uh, I get number one crab first. He moves two. One, two, coming after you. He goes two, one, two. Number three crab. Derp, derp, derp. Derp, derp, derp. <laughs> He's gonna be right behind you. Oh uh, no, what will I do? I'm gonna I'm play. closed off from the gate. <laughs> I'm going to get a wound is what I'm going to do. You are probably gonna get a wound and maybe a disarm. So, three. 
I I actually want to get a disarm status. Uh, you get gonna get four damage. So what it goes unless one, you want to reroll. I, I don't know. One okay. goes down. So zero rolls to the next line and a wound, and then two, three, four. Okay. All then right. What? And you don't get disarmed. Uh, put that wound on your nexus board. This is not good. All it is is a blocker. It's all it does. Oh no, Steph, watch out there right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but the the nexus is in. I mean, the A is in front of me. Uh, what happened? Dust has three cards in the bottom row. Yeah, we. Echo has three cards in the first column because Echo activated these. The, the center row. Those do not need to clear. Dust just put three cards in the bottom row, so Dust has just cleared his cards, her cards, whatever Dust is. Dusty. So, uh, then we are going to activate Krabby. Then we did three. Uh, four is the big crab. It's going to attack for four. Steph, don't die. <laughs> this is me dying. Uh, no, it's ah. going to be a two. Ha ah. <laughs> ha, ha, indeed. No more. <laughs> <laughs> no more. <laughs> Five is going to move two and actually strike me in the butt. Uh, I want him to disarm me. I want this to happen. The wounds would not be the worst thing in the world. That is the disarm. So three damage and a disarm. All right. So, James, that's not clear in the rules. What? If that's true. What? No, they do. No, that is actually explicitly said in the rules. He says you can't place a card that would make a three card combo that you aren't activating. Whoa, that does not say that That's in what I'm the saying. rules. You didn't read his thing clearly. I did not read it at all because in the rules, it explicitly says, where is it? I am going to find it. It does not say on page 12 of the page rules. 427. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, <laughs> the fact that you remember 427 <laughs> makes you Spock, Jelfia. <laughs> and then when clearing, where's clear? It explicitly says enemy turns, enemy attacks, hero defense. Health and wounds. I think I'm going the wrong direction. Yep, your enhancement, so I've already gone the wrong direction. I need end of turn. Here we go. If the line you activated on your grid has three cards, it must be cleared. Discard all of the action cards in that line. Only lines that were activated are cleared. So I placed this. I activated this line. This does not clear. Eventually, those cards will clear when I activate those lines. So I placed this and activated this row, not this column. Nothing says I have to activate this row. I and mean, it, but James, if I had, James might say that. In which case, he needs to clear up the rules. Yes. <laughs> because. Because that never says that in the rules. That may be the intent. We need to add a line to the rule book. So what should it say? So exactly? uh, well, there's a problem though. There's a problem that if there, if there's no. So James. I, I think I like it better having the flexibility. Like, if I had to have this, then there's no way I could ever choose this line. Assuming I had, I have to take the one that I fill. I, I, I mean, unless I gotta say, I, I like it less if I'm forced to take that. 
if I place portion. it here. But I mean, could he take the other line and then have it just clear anyway because it's a line of three cards? Well, it explicitly says only lines that were activated were cleared. Why not allow that to be left? And then eventually those individual ones are going to have to... Once these start filling up, I will have no choice but to do a line of three. I thought that was the intent. Right. So... So, I guess... I thought that I thought that was the the intent was to put massage your nexus the way you needed it to be done, and you clear it only when you activate three really good things. Boom, did it. Anyway, moving on. Uh, I do get a disarm, which I actually wanted, or I should say that I did not mind. And I, you know, I don't mind losing this one. So, right over the top of it. And that is one status. <clears throat> so, the question is can I defeat two enemies before all this goes down? Uh, uh, that was me. Now we're on. No, that was you. No, no that crabs. was crabs. We're on five crab. I need to do six crab. No, there is no six crab. That's it. That's everything in the round. Boop. Oh, it was round four because I've got four cards out. This is round five coming up. Must have forgotten to do the round marker. Oh, I've covered up all my bolsters. Bolsters are the single extra dice. Right. Yeah, I think you need to add more than a line to really get your point across. Whatever it's supposed to be. Um, yeah. And then we'll play it correctly I, going into yeah. game three, mm, I guess. I, don't, I think it causes more problems than it solves. Because that takes away player, um, player agency. Taking I, away player agency is never a good thing. I, I'm I'm with you in that if you want to activate a different line than than the than the column of all the cards, that's fine. But I think if you have a card column or row, then it should be cleared. So mm, I'm I'm, on, I'm in the so, middle of both. But I, sides. I disagree with that because if I if I already had cards here, he, like if I had cards like this. Placing something here would clear five cards? I think that's that's also unsatisfactory. I, I like managing the nexus. And you if you take away player agency, you take away it I'll be honest with you, if I if I were to play it, I would house rule on that. And I don't often house rule games. Mm. So yeah. Uh anyway, this is my opinion. Uh, I am busy choosing. Those puppies might well come down and chew on me a little bit, and I'm not happy with that. And these dudes might well be armored, which would also not be good. Uh, Quicksand, you would clear five cards if I have cards like this and I place here. Steph says they should both clear according to what Steph says that they should clear out. I think that takes away agency as well. I think the way that the way that I thought the rules were is it seems workable the way that it is. Anyway. Uh, do you need me to pop over there now, or are you good? Do you need to run for the exit? I'm probably going to go to the exit. Well, if you're going to run to the exit, I just will not get my... It doesn't mean... It means you could pop over to where I am and I would have kill to, something over here. I would have to do that. Sadly, I took damage I probably did not need to take. I might end up getting a wound beforehand anyway, so... So, 
when a hero moves onto the fold gate, you get removed from the board. You're on the off the initiative track. You don't take any more actions during the scenario. I would assume you also cannot spend things from your quantum reservoir. Yep. Two. Nothing. I am actually doing it, obviously. Um, the mud crab goes up one, so he is behind you still. So that's the only thing that happens. Moving. Oh, Seahound is attacking all players in range. Oh, and could make somebody flat footed. That would not be the worst thing in the world. He was just talking about my what I would prefer. And so I know that that's not correct, Quicksand and Drew. I know that that, is, that I know that that's not correct, but that's yes. how I would want it to be. Yes. Right. I placed the card here, so I activated that row. So activating this row, I don't clear anything because there's not three cards in it. Right. Right, and and I get that you're saying that, James. Now your problem is you can never activate the first column. I don't need to activate the first column. I can activate each of the cards individually. If I place here, I've activated this card in the first column, and it's cleared. If I do this, I've activated that card in this first column, and it's cleared. If I do this, I activate this card in the first column. The, uh, Quicksand is just saying I can never activate this entire first column, and that's okay. Eventually, those cards will clear. As soon as he places his seventh card, something's going to happen. Something is going to clear, and that's my point. That's why I don't think anything needs to be changed in rules as written. Right. I mean, something... That's my point. Something will be cleared. Something will be cleared on my seventh card. Um, I guess technically it doesn't happen. No, actually, no, it doesn't. Not until... I place this, and I activate this. Yeah, you could... That doesn't do that. clear. Right. You know, I place this. This doesn't clear. You know, at that point, something, I place it here, that doesn't clear. I place it here, that doesn't clear. Yeah, I guess you could do it on your final. On last. your final card, something is going to clear. Yeah, you could do that. So anyway, I'm still processing where I'm going to place this thing. But I'm just, I'm trying to dispute the fact you can never activate these. Yes, you can. Not all at the same time. But that was my choice. And I gave up those three activations. Right. Because I wanted this activation. Right. I wanted the range. Right. But if I were forced to take that, that takes away this player agency. That's never a good thing. Just my opinion. Um, I could get... I could get a lot of shields by going here. I would not get the attacks in. And right now, I wouldn't mind killing Puppy 6, maybe. Problem is, I've only got two attacks no matter which way I go with this, which is not great. And unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to get defeat an enemy. I think I just need to get a status or a wound and then run. And I could get a status without taking any damage as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. I just have to do this uh, intelligently. So this is going to give me three movement. If I'm here, I could get two movement. You could use your red. Could use my red. Well, I'm I'm going to have to use three of these things anyway if I'm going to clear this row. Yep. Um, and I'm going to get an attack of some sort. So. Uh, I think here's the right thing. I'm going to have to spend three before taking this on. So I think I will take a red. Mm, do I need to take that red? Because I'm going to be right next to the place anyway. I think I'm going to take a yellow. Poof! Goodbye. 
uh, end up next to you and it. Now, these things will attack all in range, so I need to be two away from you anyway. So, poof, I'm going over here. Um, with a move action? With, well, I have a move here. Right. Um, but I think I want to attack something first. Let me attack that six while I'm here. Okay. For two dice. Um, two damage could be three damage. <clears throat> I don't know if it's worth the. Uh, it only needs two damage. Number six. And then it does. Number oh, six. I thought it was three. Number three is uh, way over here. I got you. Yeah. Um, actually, I could have done that on the crab. I could have done it before teleporting. Yeah, but the crab is. I could have no. I was two away. Sorry, the colors are messing with me. Yeah. I could not have done it to crab too, regardless of what I did. Unless I had placed it here, then I could have done it. In retrospect, maybe that was the right one to clear. Didn't do it. So uh, two damage on six, and I will keep. I'll keep the focus. Um. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, then I'm going to move my two. I'll be next to and hopefully take maybe a flat footed, maybe enough for a wound. I don't know. Uh, I do get one of these off into the quantum reservoir, though. And now this clears. So you're not moving into the. I thought I was going to get this to get my plus three knowledge. Gotcha. I'm self experimenting. Mm -hmm. It's called self experimentation. Um, I can, at what point can I discard? I can, uh, focus using the, using a focus to draw a card and discard a card. Yep. Well, I don't want to lose initiative. So you just discard something with two? Uh, we'll draw and discard. Oh, that's nice. Discarding this whack for minus two. Yep. Initiative. <coughs> Could do it again, but I think I'm just going to hold right there. And then I draw up into my turn. But right, so the dogs move. The dogs move. Dogs move four and attack everything one. Well, uh, this guy doesn't need to move. Nope. Um, he is next to you regardless. Uh, starting off with dog three. Moving four towards closest target. It can't get to you. Um, dog four moving one to me. He cannot get more targets, so he will not move around. Okay. Hmm. What? What are you doing? What am I doing? You're rolling. Um, rolling for the thing attacking me, right? Yeah. 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 I'm rolling the die. Mm -hmm. Uh, it does. Do I want a wound, or do I want him to re-roll in order to get a flat-footed? Mm. I think I'm gonna try to make him do a flat foot. Okay. And then I'll be out next turn. So. You know, if, if you want to leave this turn, you can. Uh, the mud crabs mm, will not get to me. Ugh. That's more damage. That's double damage. I can make one free reroll on one attack each round. Good luck. This will be that. This will be that. I did get the tide. So I get a flat footed. I will take one damage. It avoids the wound. For now. Just bare. No, no, for now. <laughs> I am going to beat feet. Yep. As soon as I can. Yep. <clears throat> Looks like that's the spot to go. Okay. So then the other one attacks me. Uh, number five comes yeah. around. One, two, three. This is its open line eventually. Okay. Because it can't, 
it can't go around otherwise. So, and then number six attacks you for one hit. No. How about hits. no hits and no flat foot? That's good. It so, was a double miss. Oh, I need to get I need to get my thing here. I am probably not going to defeat two enemies without without taking probably a wound. Yeah. So I should probably just okay. head out the door unless I get lucky. Um, and that is that is the round we are on round six. No, that. Uh, what, I haven't that's not. Gone oh, yet. you haven't gone. Sorry. And then the mud crab. Sorry. You're replacing there, yeah. and I'm going to, I guess, attack. Which one do you want me to attack? Well, you probably want to. Must so must you chain? I don't think you have to chain. I will not be chaining. Yeah, because you want to do damage with every die. I know what you want. That and I want to pick up that fruit and head out. <laughs> so. Oh, you're picking up the fruit would be a good idea. I need five to do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven would get me out. Would get me. Oh, I can't go through him. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine is what I would need to get two fruit. Not going to happen. No. One, two, three, pick up four, five, six, seven. I could do that. I could do that. Which one of the monsters do you want me to do damage it to? It does not matter one bit to me. Well, I can try hitting the six hound, I guess. Sure. There's three that you need. How about damage with each die? Three. That's all it did. That's kill all it has. You kill it. He is dead, and I did the Draw damage. something from the bag of treasure. That's the first oh, thing we've wow. killed. Oh, yeah. We haven't killed anything. We haven't killed anything. What? Michael does a brave Sir Robin. Sir Robin ran fruit. away. Uh, so would you like a fruit? Let's see. I'm going to probably move through it. Yeah. Oh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, I can do it. So if I move through that one, go you adjacent might get to the one. other one, and I can use my spirit <coughs> for one more movement out. So I get both. Oh, you're out. wanting to get that. Yeah. I got you. So then I'm out. I'll take those two fruit. All I'm right. Out. So what, where's your movement? You've Don't you have? Oh, one, two, three, four. And, and you've already spent it? Yes. All right. So you're grabbing this on the side. Yep. One, two, three, four. No. I'm moving into the fruit that I just killed. One. one yeah. Two, three. Pick grabbing. Up. Four, four five. five. Got it. You have two fruit. Yeah. Three fruit total. All the fruit. Removing you from the board. Yeah. <clears throat> Sir Robin ran away. Good luck. I'm into the fold. Into the fold. All right. What am I holding this fruit for? Oh, that's my fruit I got. I collect fruit. You collect fruit. And then the crabs move too. That's number one. This is number two going, where'd my little target go? This is number three. One, two. This is number four. One, two. Uh, this is number five. One, two. Uh, and there is no number six. So we are good to go. I think it's all me now, huh? So it's a new round? It is a new round. Mm. Have to be sure that I do not, um, <laughs> do not die. Don't die. Don't die. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Can I go seven? You know what? The funny thing is I can't go seven unless... Spend some spirit. I spend some focus. Focus. You mean spirit? Spirit? Spirit lets you move faster. Focus lets me draw a card that lets me... Oh. Lets me be able to do what I want to do. Oh. But it's on my turn I can do that. I can't do that whenever I want. Hmm. Which means I have to play what I what I yeah. what I've got. Yeah. Because I 
I did not draw a movement, yep. which would mean I would need, I need to get the other two movement. Thanks, James. Thanks for hanging out for a bit. Thanks, James. He wanted to see scenario three. I'll send him the video after. Two, three, <laughs> four, five. I would need two spirit, which means I could put it. Yeah, I can't, I can't do it. I can't physically do it. This is only four movement. I can't get those oranges. I should just head out. I can potentially, I can potentially boost this attack and do two damage to everything around me. I don't know if it'll be enough, but maybe it is. So it'll be three away from me if I have a bonus of one for all range attacks. So I'm playing this, I have no adjustments. The Sea Hounds go down one, that's brilliant. I was hoping they would not, if they had gone up, they would have gone in front of me. Yeah. So that would have been a tragic. So I am leaving no matter what, everything that's happening is gonna be just bonus. So I'm definitely taking the Psychic Surge which is targeting all enemies within range two, plus one is three, and I can re-roll for free. So range three does not count that puppy, unfortunately. Uh, it is just these three, unfortunately. I'm pretty sure that pup was there. That pup was... The number three blue. Oh, did it get I, moved? I, I think it might have been up one. Oh. I don't know uh, why it would have moved back. That's it would I'm not thinking. have moved back. I think it got scooted. I think I, you're right. Yeah, I think it did. So I actually, I do have a chance of killing this guy. Uh, number two pup, which is damaged, is not in range. Number four pup, I could potentially kill off with, with this brain flex. Yep. I'd have to spend this to gain advantage on all attacks this round, which that would cancel advantage and disadvantage. So I'm going to do that regardless. Yep. I do still have a reroll around. So I might get two defeats. Maybe. And if not, it was worth a shot. All right. This is two dice on all four of these enemies. And the same thing happens to all of them. That's four damage. That's four to everybody. That's four to everybody. Everybody, <laughs> Steph is like, oh, that's really good. It's like, hold on, where's my, where's my emote? There I am. No, that's that's you disapproving. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. That's four damage, guys. So four damage on blue pup, gone. Uh, I need to draw one from the bag. Here, you draw them from the bag as I kill them. Mm. That's one enemy gone. Um. Puppy four, one, two, three, four damage. I could kill him off. Uh, crab four, one, two, three, four. I could just kill him off. He's not armored this time. That's good. And then crabby three, one, two, three, four damage. I think he's the right one because I want to maintain my advantage. He has one point left, uh, but he might drop something. Unless it's a fruit, it doesn't matter. We've already pulled two. Uh, no, we've only pulled one fruit. I think That's that. an extra. No. Ooh, I do still have one reroll. Certainly I can get one hit on puppy. Because it's gonna be this ranged attack. Um, I do have a question for James, actually, though. Okay. If I'm doing ranged on all of these, would it be advantage on these and not advantage nor disadvantage because they cancel? You know what I'm saying? Because it's a ranged attack. I would assume that would be the case. So if I'd rolled any tides, they would have counted against. That's my understanding. Right. But also, you know, it's, it's advantage and disadvantage they'd cancel. So... Anyway, I still have my one reroll persistent power. 
so I'm going to attack the pup. Quicksand says you get three die, right? Uh, Quicksand says I get three dice. Um, the black most that's there. my next attack, and so this one's the one I chose. Oh, so I got chose two that. dice he for the Psychic for Surge. Yeah. So this, I only get two dice. Yeah. So now I'm going to do the Brain Flex. That's three hits. So Maybe that kills enough. the puppy. Whatever is next to it, hopefully it's fruit. I'm trying. And I do get my two defeat enemies. Not a fruit. No. Um. One, two, three, four, five. Now, here's the thing. No, I can't risk it. There's no way I can risk it. Well, you don't... For two it, fruit. Doesn't it go on the space, and if you move over it, you get it then? I, I can pick it. I could... I could... I'm picking it up if I want it. Right, but if you're going to try and go grab the two fruits, that's all. Well, I go here. This this goes from one to zero if I right. took it. It yeah. goes up one more. Yeah. I push it down one more to use it. I go on here. I take the two. Right. I mean, that's really the only way to get to this is by standing on the spawn spot. Yep. And then everything is going to move two. And then you'd have another turn, right? But then I'd have another turn. Yeah. I mean, they can't reach me. It's tough. I don't know. One, two. One, two. They block me. That's not great. I'd have to psychic surge them. But I'd have to find a way to get there. I mean, I have no they're, movement. they're almost dead, so you could probably kill them. If you go to the fruit, they will totally block you in. That's yeah, but that's they're the concern. One and two. They're at one and two points. So my con it's more of do you want to do another turn? I don't know. Oh, we were supposed to spawn, so we, we will were, we will we spawn were, a sea hound, which would be why three plus. Oh, for players, three oh, plus. Okay, player count three plus. Got it. I don't know. It's up to you if you want the fruit. Hey, let's ask the let's ask the people in the audience here. <laughs> should he go get the fruit and take another turn, or should he just exit? Good luck. It is risky. The second part of the second part did not give you a round goal. What? Just exit. Just exit. The second part. Yeah, I can just exit for free. Grabbing this, which doesn't really. We matter. didn't really have a round goal. It just says exit. So it, all it says was exit when all when all of the active, not knocked out heroes have moved onto the fold gate. Yeah. So one concern is if for some reason he moves up two. Uh, are there any twos? There are no. There is a plus two. He the sea hounds could potentially move ahead of me. For purposes of this stream, I will just. Leave. Yay! <laughs> okay. As you drag your injured teammates to the full gate, you catch a glimpse at the creature slowing down behind you. They stomp and see their skin bulging as if about to burst. Broken shell. That's disgusting. What's up with them? Axel says, panting. A symptom of prolonged hyperdimensional stasis, perhaps? Sagashi muses, thoughtful. They're evolving, Eko says gravely. We should continue. I reckon they'll be back even small, stronger. Congratulations, you've made it inside the fold. Yay! Find the temporal bend cards in the fold-touched card deck. They're up there somewhere. If any heroes were knocked out, add two copies to the action deck. Otherwise, add two copies to the mud crab action deck. This? Yes. They go in the mud crabs. Oh man, that means we're gonna see more mud crabs. Uh, yes. <laughs> um. Oh. Shell shields cannot block this attack. Oh. Oh. If any heroes were knocked out, we add them to the sea hound. So we're gonna see the sea hounds too. So I'm gonna put this in the midst of the mud crabs because when we put these cards away. This is gonna stay with this monster's deck for the rest of the game. Forever. Forever. Or at least until I say otherwise. All heroes gain four experience and yes. two fame. That seems fantastic. I feel like there's not enough fame. I'm not famous enough. Man, I want some fruit. Well, you could give me fruit later. I 
can. Yeah. You can give me fruit when we are in Naviri. And four experience puts us at nine experience. <laughs> what? The monsters get upgrades too? Not fair. Yes, they do. So not fair. Uh, I get three knowledge and two power. I gain two oh, flow. Oh, I'm one short. Two flow and one and three grit. You'll be one short. Yep. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Oh, hey, we're going to have a boss in scenario three. <clears throat> How do I get more flow? I need to do the goals. Is that it? <laughs> I was going to say suck harder, but... Uh, no. I mean, that's how you make more flow in a vacuum, right? Mm. You're like, no. No. Don't like. Yeah, sucking would mean we But I thought right. like we could just spend Ooh, you have a wound. experience. You can when you get to Naviri. Mm. Yeah, we can't spend All anything right, right I now. I gotta mark off my wound spot. All right. Path advancements. Any heroes that are knocked out gain only one path advancement for each completed goal. Though well, that's good to know. I didn't know that. Upgrades. Give each player the three cards for their character marked with their initial one through three. For example, Axel would be a one, a two, a three. Where are mine? There. Mm -hmm. Mine. So the question is... I don't see what it's talking about. Well, you don't see what it's talking about. Uh, you don't have numbers in the bottom corner? D1, D2, D3? Nope. I have D1, D1, D1. That's it. I also have E1, E1, and E1. So maybe oh, that's what it means? From the narrative deck. Narrative deck. Mm, these are all new things. Well, that may be a thing for James. You can spend experience to gain up to two of these cards. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I like the plus three. That's really nice. So we'll just assume it's these three cards? Yes. Okay. Um, but they should say either the rules need to be changed, either the book needs to be changed or the cards need to be changed because they don't say the same things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mark one space on your wound jack for every wound and mark any fruit gathered. Hey, it's my first fruit. I have five fruit now. That's fantastic. Boop. So the question is, which of these do we do we want to add? I don't know. I've got... Oh, having hearts would be I've good. got two shields plus a bolster and know. add plus one bolster to one subsequent attack this round. What, when you place this or whenever you activate it? Hmm. That fruitastic, Jelfia, yes. Um, I've got pinpoint accuracy... Pierce, uh, ignore armor abilities when applying damage. And then there is Swift Song, which is plus three on initiative. And one attack at three range, two different enemies. And if I spend some spirit, I get plus one targeted, targeted enemy. That's really good. I'm definitely taking Swift Song. I mean, all I don't right. know I wouldn't. Take a look at these. Tell me what you all I think. need to remove three experience and taking your cards. Three experience seems like a no-brainer for Swift Song. You have Fearsome Onslaught. Hearts. Plus one. Two hearts. That's so good. And it's not a slash. It's all of it. It's all of it. It's really good. It's really good. Desert Twister, three movement. And if you spend spirit, each adjacent enemy loses a heart. That's okay, but you're usually never going to, you know, kill off a, a critter by, by that. We should switch to the, over, the face view. And Sword Throw. It's one chained at two range. That's pretty good because I don't have any range right now. Um, but here's the question I have. If you, chain, if you chain those together, do they all have range? I don't know the answer to that. I would say that. yes. I don't know the answer to that. I would that. say add it all up and do that much damage at a range. So like if you did this one and this one together, it would be three attack at two, two range. range. Yes. 
Now, here's my other thing. I have nine experience. I could just get a level three spirit. You cannot. What? Only when you... I'm going to say this one more time. Only when you go to Naviri can you do that. I can't do trade upgrades right now. No. What? I'm telling you. I believe you. You cannot do that until you go to Naviri. It is not in the book. Currently, these are the things you have access to. That's this is what you can upgrade. Sticking out your lip is not going to give it to you. No. <laughs> no. That's, I know you don't want to hear it. So you think I should spend six? You can get nothing until you go to Naviri. I don't like that. All right, I'll spend six and get two cards. Quick Stan says that's an instant. It only happens once to turn you place the card. I, I think you're right. Uh, Quick Stan also says if you chain, they all range. Steph, are you going with range or hearts? I'm going to go with Quick Stan. Both. Both. <laughs> I'm spending six. Is it? I want to get all the things on the chart. And then <laughs> she spends all her experience to get cards. That's what I got now. And <coughs> we're not going to get to Naviri. We are at the end of next adventure. It's at the beginning of four. Therefore. End of three. <laughs> The beginning, beginning of, of four. four. It's not it's not the end of three. It's no. It's, it's actually a full thing between scenarios. So I'm gonna buy those two cards because <laughs> why not? <laughs> because that experience is burning a hole through your pocket. <laughs> I got it. I thought I could just do an upgrade to my resilience, but you said no. So. Uh, you cannot. You are. You have not I been will, given those instructions. Yet. I will not do that then. Even though that's what I wanted to Those do. instructions have not been given to you. And you know why they didn't give you instructions about adding uh, goal things to your deck? Because you haven't been told. But maybe I want it. Maybe I want it. <laughs> maybe I want it. Anyway, uh, closing thoughts uh, for Tidal Blades. Fantastic game. Um, fantastic art, as you already know. Yeah. Um, I love the Nexus board. Um, and we'll figure out all those other rough edges and stuff with the Nexus board um, by the time it launches. But yeah, what do you think? I really like it. I can't wait to see where we go next. That's right. And we're going to do game three right now. We're going to do scenario three right so now. If you liked what this game offered, check out the check next, out the next video. We're going to play it right now. And <laughs> if you're with us on Twitch, then we're going to just go right into it after we do a cutscene. So, yes. We'll be right back, guys. All right. Oh, hey, check it out on Kickstarter. Kickstarter. I'm going to put the link on here. And as soon as Nightbot puts it up, I am going to try to Nope, I can't copy it. I can do it this way. <laughs> here we go. Copy. And then I can actually put it in the link for people who want who want to, oh, it's a huge link. <laughs> just search on Kickstarter for Tidal either Blades. Druid City Games or Tidal you Blades. Just You're going to find it. Unfolders and you'll find it. You're going to find it. Yes. Oh, it didn't show up. Mine did not show up. Hmm. All right. So, so we'll I don't be, know what's up with that. We'll be right we'll back. We'll be right back.